Hey folks, today I'm talking about my miter saw station and uh, just going into a little bit of details as why on a couple things and some of its specifications, whatever. Based upon, uh, my notes here are based upon some commonly asked questions and I also asked if you guys had any questions for this on my Instagram page and I compiled those to get some talking points here. So first up is dust collection. This is not a dust... Um, extraction system it's more of a dust management system uh, there's every every miter saw is different as far as how you contain the dust and the specifics needed for that particular saw to get uh, as best dust collection as possible uh, so I didn't want to go with something specific to this particular saw if say somebody else didn't have this particular saw and really uh, I didn't really want to try and fight down the uh, absolute 100% dust extraction. I just wanted to get the dust out of my face and then also have all the larger chips, the mess from a miter saw contained. So what I have is this sealed off box, dust collection box, and on the back bottom side is a four inch dust collection port. And what this allows is once the dust collector is running, it creates a natural draft to suck the air into this. So if there is any dust that is spewed up in the air from this saw, it naturally gets pushed back and sucked up by the dust collector. All of the larger chips basically just go into the back, hit the wall, and wherever they fall, they fall. This is a containment system, and I'm not exactly concerned with, I'm not concerned at all, with keeping this area clean. It'll naturally create a funnel, and the dust will go in there. So I'm completely satisfied with it. After a bunch of cuts, maybe a project that uses the miter saw quite frequently, or like when I was making my workbench, uh, just about everything had to be rough cut to size. And at that point, uh, you'll, you'll notice just a tiny bit of dust on the ground, nothing more than what you would notice, what you would notice on any of the other tools. Uh, I would say it's on par with my table saw, which has pretty good dust collection. And occasionally you'll get a little bit of dust buildup on these horizontal surfaces to the side. But because this dust collection, uh, dust management area, this, this box is kind of extended out to the platform where the saw rests on, all you do is just brush it in there and that's, that's it. So I'm very pleased with the dust management system uh, that, that is with very little effort. I just put a four inch dust collection port in the back and it's just, it works just fine. Another common question or concern is, why did I put the uh, stop lock system on the left if I'm right-handed, or why do I have all of this material support over here and very little on that side? Well, regardless of if you're left-handed or right-handed, all miter saws that I know of have the handle on the right-hand side, so you need to operate it as if you are right-handed. So if the handle's on this side, your eyeballs are on this side looking past the blade over here. So typically how I would use a miter saw without a stop lock system is I would make my mark on the piece of wood and put a little X on the side of that mark that the blade needs to be on in order for me to have my piece the appropriate length that I want. So if I make my cut, or as I'm making my cut, I'll have my X on that side so that I can see the appropriate, I can see my side of the cut Leaving, leaving me with the appropriate size material over here. If I make it reversed so that my, the piece that I want is on this side, then I have to look through the teeth to see the cut on the opposite side. Doesn't make sense. So for that reason, I want my material on this side and whatever I want my piece size to be, my finished piece to be on this side. And if my finished piece is on this side, I want maximum capacity with the stop block, so that's why it's on this side. Well, then that naturally brings up the question of well, what about material support? You have a small surface over here, so you can't cut that much material on this miter saw station because of that. Uh, no, it's a common misconception of this side being small, you can't have, uh, it's just a visual misconception of this side being small, you can't have that much material support. But think about this, if, if you want something to, it, it, the balance point of a board is right in the middle. So if you have more than 50% of the entire length supported on an eight foot piece, if you have 49 inches on one side supported, it's not gonna fall off because more than half of the piece 
is supported. The balance point is on the support. So because this is a full 48 inches, and then I have, I think it's like 16 inches from the blade to here, something like that, then that's more than five feet. So theoretically speaking, I can put with the blade down a 10 foot board right up against the blade all the way over there and it's not gonna fall off. It's gonna be 100% supported, uh, well, supported enough to where it won't move during the entire cut. So this amount over here gives me access or allows me to support materials, the longest materials I'm ever gonna use in here. And it also gives me, since this side is eight feet and there's a distance to the blade, then the stop block, if you push it all the way over here, in my case, which you can make it smaller if you wanted to, the stop block, but I have 106 and 5 eighths of an inch, well, 106 and 3 quarters of an inch of stop block capacity, more than I've ever used for it. So, yes, material support on that side and then the maximum amount of uh, stop block capacity on my left side because the miter saw forces you to be right-handed. Hopefully that makes sense. A lot of the questions for this miter saw station are specifically related to uh, a certain feature. If I was to build it again, would I include this feature? And a common one is these, cubby, is these cubbies up here at the top. And would I incorporate them? Yes. The reason is it adds another level of storage up here at the top. If you don't want this other level of storage up here at the top, then having these cubbies is pointless. You can save yourself the plywood and just use this top shelf as a final shelf with no added storage up at the top. What's the rough cost of the miter saw station? Well, it totally depends on where you live, what time you purchase the materials, and what type of materials you want to make. So there's no such thing as like, this should cost you X amount of dollars. There's way too many variables. But uh, as this is, as you see here, this is about $1,000 worth of materials. Uh, there's 15 total sheets of plywood, uh, and some of those plywood pieces can be made out of thinner material. I called for a three quarter inch on the vast majority of this. However, some people have provided feedback sedating, stating that they used half inch for some pieces here and there uh, to reduce cost. I've heard of a lot of people using pine plywood uh, with good results to save cost. Um, and then also, you know, these days OSB is a is a viable alternative for plywood that is a lot less expensive. So uh, basically just shop around in your area and find um, sheet goods that you think will be, well, that will do the job. Every bit of this is birch plywood and it's covered in a couple coats of uh, water-based polyurethane. And it's, the water-based polyurethane is held up really well, especially on these surfaces that see a lot of abuse. Uh, it's also the same finish that I put on my assembly table and outfeed table. And for shop furniture, it works really, really well. There's a lot of questions on how the drawer slides are holding up. How do I like them? Do I still recommend them after this long of use? Uh, these are economy grade, full extension. I think they're like one inch over extension drawer slides. I don't recall the exact price off the top of my head, uh, but I did buy them from Outwater Plastics, I think. Uh, they're very easy to use, and I've had no problems with them. Uh, I've never vacuumed off any of the dust that has accumulated on them on the sides. The amount of dust on them is very little considering that this thing is, I think this is um, close to two years old now. A year and six months, a year and eight months, something like that. Um, I have zero maintenance on the drawer slides and they're working out just fine. I'm very pleased with them. And down here on these larger drawers, I actually doubled them up. And as far as the drawer slides go, this is a 48 inch drawer that's roughly 24 inches deep. And I think it's 12 inches of internal capacity, something like that. But one finger on one side over here and the drawer's not racking at all. Comes out just fine. And I've got quite a bit of weight in here and one finger will close it. So I'm very pleased with the drawer slides. They're, they're very convenient, and uh, so far they've, they've done everything that I've asked them to do. As most of you guys know, I do have plans available for this particular station if you wanna build it just like this. But regardless of whether you build this design or another design, or come up with your own, 
Uh, there's two things I want you, or I would suggest that you you put emphasis on. Number one is the order of retrieval for what you put in it if it's a storage solution like this is. And number two is ergonomics. So uh, the order of retrieval, there's, uh, you may have heard of first order of retrieval, something that you use frequently, you should never have to move something else to get to. So, and with that in mind, I'll go through the, the storage solutions here uh, with the most easily accessible all the way down to stuff that I don't use as much in that particular order. So first order of retrieval is the things that I use the most. These are at, at eye level and my cubbies and there you don't have to move anything to get to what you need. So everything is grab and go, no moving anything for like my drills, my drivers, marking devices, hearing protection, eye protection, tape measure, uh, drill drivers, glue, squares, nail gun, the most commonly used stuff, I don't have to move anything to get to. Now, that this whole section was supposed to be that, but I really only needed about this much, and then this has just kind of become miscellaneous storage. So uh, I can add stuff to this if I needed it, uh, but I don't. Next in line from that is this whole entire row of drawers, the upper drawers. And when I made the plans, I referred to this whole row as uh, this bank is T1, this is T2, T3, T4, meaning the top cabinets. Same theme down here. This is B1, B2, B3. So next in line is the T cabinets, starting with the bottom and going up, and they're all drawers, no doors. So the most commonly accessible items are in this, look, uh, this elevation because I don't have to raise my shoulders hardly at all to get anything out of here. I can visually see instantly as I pull the drawer out what is in line or what is in the, each one of these drawers. Uh, next in line is the middle drawer. It's a little bit more difficult. We're not talking about much at all because you have to lift your shoulder a little bit, but I can still see exactly what's in each one of these drawers. Next in line from that is these top ones, lightweight items. I can still see in here just fine. I'm five foot six and all the items in here are pretty light, so I'm not gonna stress my shoulders getting them out. Um, this particular drawer is um, like paint stuff, finishing supplies, uh, rollers and such like, and, and those kind of things. So it's nothing heavy, nothing like a, a larger router would, wouldn't go up here. Wouldn't make sense to, in my opinion. Moving on from that is the lower drawers, but in the opposite order, the most accessible stuff top, lowest accessible stuff on bottom. So this is my tape drawer and my hardware drawer. I can instantly see everything. I don't have to bend over to reach any, any of my screws or anything. And then as you go down, you have the lesser used items. And also it's worth noting that these drawer poles, I cut them out on a CNC machine, but after that, I took them to a router. Even if you didn't want, it didn't have a CNC machine to make these, you could just use a circle, whatever you wanted to. Um, but I took them to a router with a chamfer bit, so no matter where you are, no matter where you grab, there's an edge that you can open the drawer, which is incredibly handy for these lower drawers because the stuff that I don't use frequently at all, here on the bottom, I can just use my foot to pull the drawer open. So this is my drawer for all my air-powered stuff, my nail guns, my HVLP sprayer, and if I'm just looking for something, okay, it's not in there. I can open it, look at, look at it, and close it without even bending over. Same with this other large drawer. This is where I've got all of my um, corded tools that I no longer use because the cordless ones are more convenient for me. With the drawer pulls, I can open it up without ever bending over just to see if something's in there. So. Think about the, the, the little things. You don't wanna continuously bend over every time you need something. Uh, that's gonna put unnecessary strain on your back. Sounds like you know next to nothing for smaller items, but it's still unnecessary strain. And then for the uh, most commonly used items, don't, don't block them. Just keep them readily available and accessible. So with that being said, the most common question I get by far is, Overall, would I change anything if I had to make it over again? Not really. This is a very efficient system in my opinion, and it's working out very well for me. The only thing that I did when I built it that didn't work out for me is I put my planer, which is quite heavy, in this slide-out tray down here, 
And since then, I don't use the planer in here at all. This is just a catch-all tray and it just, this is inefficient use, inefficient use of this space. If I was to build it all over again, I think the, pretty much the only change I would make is to have uh, this particular wasted space to be more like these larger multi-purpose drawers rather than a single tray. These particular, or these two over here have worked out really well for not so commonly used bulky items. Other than that, you know, I don't think I would change anything. It, it's, it's working out quite well for me. As I previously said, I do have a set of plans available for this miter saw station if you want to build the exact one. And you don't necessarily have to build the exact one. It's, it's a somewhat modular system. Any one of the base cabinets can be moved to either side and any one of the top cabinets can be included or not included. So if you wanted more cabinet or more cabinet drawer storage that is this width, then you could build multiples of T1 and T3 rather than T2. So it is somewhat modular. Uh, but the plans covered to everything needed and specifics to make this particular miter saw station. And if you want to take a little percentage off, then use the promo code TOOLTALK. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, but anyway, you guys take care, have a great day, and I will talk to you next time.